While we're talking about isotopes, it's worth saying something about carbon. Carbon, as we said before, has six protons and six neutrons. So let's draw this. I'll just draw six protons and six neutrons and six electrons around it. So a carbon atom can be pictured something like this. These are the electrons around the outer edge and down in the nucleus are six protons and six neutrons. So a carbon atom has an atomic number of six because there's six protons and it has a mass number of 12 because there are 12 nuclear particles, six protons and six neutrons. And carbon in this form is sometimes referred to as carbon 12. And that 12 comes from the mass number right there, carbon 12. Now carbon can exist in a variety of forms. This type of carbon, carbon 12, can show up in a few different forms or several different forms. Here's a picture of a piece of graphite. Carbon-12 atoms can be arranged in a structure to form graphite, and um, they can also be arranged to form diamond. And here's a picture of some diamonds. And interestingly, graphite is completely opaque, which means no light goes through it, and diamond is completely transparent, which means light travels through it perfectly. And, um, and because of diamond's unique opt optical properties, they can actually be cut in a way so that that light reflects back off of the inner boundary between the diamond and the air, and all the light comes out the top. So diamonds really are very sparkly because of the, um, not just because of the way they're cut, but because of that and their optical properties. But um, graphite and diamond are both made of carbon, um, pure carbon-12. Um, graphite is also very soft. You know, you rub it on a piece of paper and you leave a mark. That's what your pencil is doing. And diamond is one of the hardest substances known, but they're both made of 100% carbon. Carbon can also be arranged in little tiny structures, and this, there's some very new experimental research going on with carbon nanotubes. And, and here's a picture. Each little point here each of these little points at an intersection here would be a carbon atom. And uh, researchers are figuring out how to arrange them in these solid structures of microscopic tubes that can be very, very strong for their size. So in the field of nanotechnology, where they're trying to build microscopic little tiny machines, uh, these things are, are hopefully going to be very useful. But those are all different forms of carbon-12. That's all. Those are all made from the same isotope of carbon, carbon-12. But there's another isotope of carbon known as carbon-14. And carbon-14 is formed in the atmosphere by cosmic rays. So if you imagine the surface of the Earth here, and, and here, here's our atmosphere. I'll just draw some dots here to represent the air. Um, that blankets the Earth. The atmosphere is, or the Earth, is commonly or constantly being bombarded by radiation from space. And this is radiation that's left over from the formation of the universe. And the, the cosmic rays cause some of the carbon in the atmosphere, some of the carbon-12, to be converted into carbon-14. So there's a little bit of carbon-14 in the air and we're all breathing that so right now all of us have a little bit of carbon-14 in us and any any living tissue that contains carbon and everything alive has some carbon in it including plants any any living tissue with carbon also has some carbon-14 in a certain ratio there's a certain amount of carbon-14 compared to the ordinary carbon-12 just because the carbon-14 exists in the atmosphere in this certain ratio because it's being created in the atmosphere by cosmic rays hitting the earth. Now carbon-14 is radioactive and that means that it decays over time. So carbon-14 in your body is slowly decaying and the amount of it is being slowly depleted but as you breathe in the air 
you're you're constantly keeping the carbon 14 at a steady level in your body very small amount now not not this tremendously dangerous amount of radioactive substance but just a very small amount but it's a known amount the amount of carbon 14 in your body exists in a certain ratio compared to the amount of carbon 12 but after you die or after say a plant dies say a tree in the forest it, it dies the the radioactive carbon continues to decay and people can come along later thousands of years later and measure the amount of radioactive carbon 14 that is left and based on how much is remaining they can tell how long it has been decaying and that gives us an idea of how old something is so you might have heard of, heard of this referred to as carbon dating that's what this is it's measuring the amount of carbon 14 compared to the amount of regular carbon 12 and based on the fact that the carbon 14 decays at a known rate they can tell how long it has been decaying or basically how long it has been since something has died so a good example would be in an archaeological dig for example they uncover this old city and maybe they um, find an old fire pit or something like that and there's some wood there they can test that wood and get an idea of the age it might not be exact but they can get a, a reasonable idea of the age of this archaeological find based on the radioactive decay of the carbon 14